This is a video that shows you how to download and install Open ESB. In this case on Windows 7, it's very similar on Windows XP. There's a little difference, but uh, we come to that. So you first go to openesb.net, uh, then you go to download, and then you have the choice to download either version 2.3 beta or 2.2. In the course we are going to use the version 2.2 because uh, this is stabler than the version 2.3 beta which has serious bugs which makes it unusable for us. So you download then this for the Windows platform and yes I want to continue and then I save it and of course I already did this so I cancel this and have a look here where I have downloaded the installer. Now on Windows XP you can just double click on it and it will start the installer. On a Windows 7 and Windows Vista system you have to first go here into properties and in then in compatibility and then switch on run this program in compatibility mode for Windows XP. If you don't do this the program won't start. So you double click and after a while get a question about uh, whether you should run it or yes, yes you should of course run it then the Glassfish installer configures itself and this is just a Java program running Okay, we just say <coughs> next, we agree to the license agreement. And here, this is a very good path. Not in program files, it should just be in this Glassfish ESB version 2.2 uh, file and then NetBeans. And this is the uh, JDK. And the version number depends a little bit on what computer you're using. The important part here is that this has to be a Java 6 JDK and it can't be a Java 7 JDK. If you only have a Java 7 JDK, you should install a Java 6 JDK. Then we say next and here we have uh, admin. Uh, we install the Glassfish, the application server, the username for the administrator will be admin. The default password should stay as admin admin that helps uh, debug and uh, uh, for us uh, helps you to uh, work with the system. The same should the HTTP port should be 8080 and the admin port should be uh, 4848. You could change this but then again we will have problems later in the lecture where we just assume that the port is always 8080. We say next and then we stay, say install and we have to wait until the system installs. It takes some time. So Glassfish has now uh, installed successfully and we can deselect the registration page and then we say finish and we're done. And now we have here uh, the icon for NetBeans and we can start NetBeans so NetBeans has been started uh, no we don't want to register we say we click uh, the start page now we have the possibility to update to uh, the newer version of NetBeans but in this case we should not be doing this because uh, it is unclear whether the 
so our plugins uh, for uh, 6.71 are compatible with the uh, 6.9 plugins so we stay with that version now here we have the possibility to add new projects and here in services we have our application server and it's below servers here where we have our Glassfish application server now if you install this on a personal computer where you alone work uh, with NetBeans and Glassfish then you can actually use the default domain but if you are in the eData bar then you should create your own personal domain now how to do this you first remove the existing domain and then you add a server and you choose its Glassfish version 2.x you can give it uh, a name here personal domain you say next and these should be set then we should set this to register local domain uh, sorry create personal domain we want to have the default profile we say next we have to define where the domain folder should sit and that should be of course in for example here my documents in a file uh, in a folder that is owned by you for example the network drive and then we say the name or any other name and we say next we have to provide uh, username and password for the administrator and again we should keep the admin pass uh, username and the admin admin password and here it chooses different types of admin ports and HTTP port but we want to have this again coming for all installation you should change this to 4848 and the domain port to 8080 again then we say finish and you can see here that the domain is being created so here you can see the personal domain has been created and now I can actually start the domain and use it for development.